Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial from Tech for All. This is Saifuddin Ghanizada. In this tutorial, I will show you guys the status menu of Kirio Control. Let's start. First of all, open a web browser and navigate to Kirio Control's administration panel. Enter the username and password. And click on the login button. Now click on the status icon. The first menu under status is active host. Under active host menu, you will see a list of the clients who are currently connected directly to the network. The first column is the host name, which will show you the host name of the device that is currently connected. This column will show you the current download speed. This column will show you the current upload speed. In this column, you will see the MAC address of the client. Here, you will see the IP address. And here, you will see the IP address status of the client. If you want to add extra columns or remove a specific column, just hover your mouse to the end of a column, click on the icon, and select columns. And then, just uncheck the name, and the column will be removed from the table. If you want to add more columns, just select your desired column and it will be shown in the active host table. After you have added all the columns, just scroll and you will see the columns that we have recently added. If you want to sort the table by host name, just click on the host name and from the menu select sort ascending or sort descending. If you select sort ascending, the hostname column will be sorted ascending and if you select the descending, it will be sorted in descending mode. To see some extra information of a specific client, just select a client and under the general tab, you will see the host information, the hostname, the user that he is currently logged in into his device, the login time, the inactivity time, the IPv4 address, the IPv6 address, the authentication type, and the MAC address of the device. Under the traffic information, you will see how much the user has downloaded, how much he has uploaded, and how many number of connections is he using currently. From the current download, you will see the download speed of the client, and from the current upload, you will see the current upload speed. If you want to auto refresh the active host table, just check this option. If it is by default checked, that's okay. If it is not checked, you should check it and it will refresh the table every 15 seconds. To see a user's activity, select the user and click on the activity tab. Here you will see that which websites he has been accessing and the, at what time he has accessed a specific website. Click on the Connections tab to see the user's connection. As you can see that the user is using the traffic rule NAT. His source IP address is 10.10.10.103 and the destination IP address is this. He is using the bandwidth management rule NetSacker Weekend. And also the load balancing is going through the public interface and the type of the traffic is outbound connection. If the user is using local internet or local sources, in the type of the connection, it will be written inbound connection or local traffic. If you want to sort any of the column, just click on it and it will be sorted in ascending or descending mode. Click on the histogram to see the user's activity chart. And from the drop down of the time interval, you can select the charts interval whether it should be for two hours, for one day, for one week, or a user's one-man traffic chart. If you want to completely hide these four tabs, just click on the hide details, and you will only see the active host table. To bring back the tabs again, click on the show details, and it will show you the general activity, connections, and historygram tab. If you want to see the active connections of your network, click on the Active Connections menu. 
In the Active Connections tab, you can see the traffic types or connection types of your network, which traffic rule it is using, which service, the source IP, the destination IP, the bandwidth management rule, the load balancing, and the type of connection that is being used by your clients. If you want to add extra columns, just hover over your mouse to the end of any column, click on this icon, and from the columns, select any column which you want. For example, I want the source country name and I want the destination country name to be shown in the table. Here you can see that the source country column and the destination country column is added. If you want to see a specific connection's detail, just select the connection and from there you can see the connection's detail. In the connection information you can see the source IP, the source host name, the source country and the destination's IP, host name and country name. If you want to hide the details, click on the hide details button and you will only see the active connections table. If you want to show the connections information, click on the show button and it will show you the connections information again. From the traffic type, click on the traffic rule and from there it will sort out the traffic rule. As you can see that currently the firewall traffic and internet access NAT is being used by my clients. The source country is Australia and the destination is United States which means that my clients are accessing specific websites of United States. If you want to hide local connections inside the active connections table, just check this mark and it will hide all the local connections. If you want to show it again, just uncheck this option. If you want to see how many clients have been connected to your network through the VPN application of Curio Control, just click on the VPN clients. And from there, you can see the number of clients and their information. As currently, there isn't any client connected to my network through a VPN client. That's why the list is empty. Let me connect a laptop to this network through the Curio VPN. And then I will see whether any client is connected or not. As you can see, guys, that there is only one client connected to the network currently through Curio VPN. If you click on the client, you can see that the client is using the admin user it's connected to the Curio VPN. The host operating system is Windows X, Windows 10 64 bit. The host name is this one. The client's IP address is this one. There it shows the login time. Click on the user statistics menu to see how many of the users have exceeded their quota. As I don't have any extra user in my network and the current network is open and I also don't use any quota system there isn't any user in the user statistics menu. The only user that I can see is the admin. But in your case, it might be different. If you have given a specific users for your clients, then their usernames will be shown in here. You can see the username, the full name, the percentage of the quota that they have used, the number of MBs that they have used today, this week, this month, and the total number of MBs they have used. Currently, as you can see, that it has given me a summary of all the users that 7,267 MBs have been used today by all my clients and 7,269 MBs have been used by users which are not logged into the network. As I said, that the network is open and the users don't need to enter any username and password. That's why the not login amount MB is very much. Click on the traffic chart menu to see the traffic chart. Under the traffic chart, you have two options. The first one is the interfaces that will show you the traffic chart of specific interfaces. Click on the interfaces and you will see their traffic chart. After you have selected a specific traffic chart, from the time interval, you can see the chart. Currently, the chart is being displayed for the last two hours. Let me change it to one day. Now you can see the traffic chart is being displayed for the last 24 hours. You can see the traffic chart of one week and one month. If you want the chart to be auto refreshed, just enable this option. If this option is disabled, 
the chart will not be refreshed automatically. To hide the chart, simply click on the Hide Details and it will hide the chart. If you are using bandwidth management rules in your network and you want to see the traffic chart of a specific bandwidth, just click on the specific bandwidth and you will see the chart for that specific bandwidth management rule. If you want to see the alerts of your network, simply click on the alert messages. From there, you can see the alerts in your network. To see the details of a specific alert, simply select the alert and in here you will see the alert details. From there, you can see the source address, the most frequent destination addresses, the unique destination address, the limit, the user and the host name of the firewall. The alert message will be displayed in here. If you want to see the system health of your current firewall, click on the system health and from there you will see the CPU usage and the RAM usage and also the storage usage. From the time interval drop down, select one day and it will show you the system health, CPU and the storage usage of the last 24 hours. You can filter the system health from the drop down up to one week and one month. If you want to see the storage usage, click on the manage button and from here you can see that how much of the space is being used for the logs and how much is being used for the curio control statistics. You have an option here to delete all the log at once and to delete all the curio control statistics or to change the retention policy. Click on the close button to close the storage space details. If you want to reboot your system, click on the reboot button. The system will confirm your action that do you still want to reboot the server or not. If you want to reboot the server, simply click on the yes. I won't reboot it because it will take too much time to restart. If you want to power off the server, click on the power off button and again it will ask you to confirm your action. Click yes to power off the server and click on no if you don't want to power off the server. Click on the IP tools menu. Under IP tools, the first tab is ping, from where you can ping all the devices which are currently connected to your network. For example, let me ping a host from my network. Enter the target IP, select the protocol type, select the number of count, I want to ping up to 10 packets and select the size which is by default 56. If you want to allow fragment, enable this option and if you don't want it, just disable it. Click on the start button to start the ping command. If you want to stop the ping command, simply click on the stop button to stop it. If you haven't limit the ping commands up to 10 packets and it is unlimited, so the ping command will go on infinitely and will not stop until you click on the stop button. To do a trace out, simply click on the trace out and enter the IP that you want to trace it. For example, I want to do a trace on this specific IP and I also want to resolve addresses to host name. Click on the start to start the trace route. If you want to stop it, simply click on the stop button. To do a DNS lookup, simply click on the DNS lookup tab. Enter the name. For example, I want to do a DNS lookup for the google.com. From the tool, whether you want to select NS lookup or DIC. From the server, you have an option to choose the local host or you want to choose a specific DNS and click on the start button to start the DNS lookup. The result of the DNS lookup will be shown in the command output. If you want to find out a specific IP address's hostname or a specific hostname's IP address, just simply click on the host tab and now enter the host IP address or hostname. I want to know the hostname of IP address 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 and click on the start button. 
you can see the details of this specific IP address in the command output. And that's all for today guys. If you need any help, comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I will catch you very soon with another tutorial. Till then, have nice time.